Hi dear Gloria, good to be able to be with you guys again today for the first time in this 2021. I hope you all have a very prosperous 2021. The word I'll be sharing with you guys today is help. I'm a slave to my mind. I don't know if any of you have ever had the situation of being enslaved by your mind in the sense of that that your mind has been keeping you from the promises and from God's best that he has for your life. To speak more about this, I will be using the story um, of the Israelites and being enslaved um, in Egypt and their story of coming out of Egypt and being delivered. Basically the entire story right through Exodus. I'll be using that example. So um, as you start reading this, um, if, as you start reading Exodus, you'll see um, Pharaoh basically him being very insecure about this Israelite nation, being actually a, a very great dictator in this situation. He's basically saying that um, the Israelite nation, there's so many of them, and um, there's a chance that they might one day decide to turn on um, the Egyptians and band with um, his enemies and come against the Egyptians. So for that reason, he then decides to enslave the entire Israelite nation. The, the, the interesting thing about enslaving the Israelites is in, in the very thing why he's enslaving them, they still keep on, in, in, in the moment that he enslaves them, they still multiply. I love that. I really, really love that, that it doesn't matter um, what the enemy tries and, and brings across your life, is that if God wants us to multiply, that we are going to multiply. Um, and I love that he, that he proves that through this, this story. But with this is as well, in the multiplication, um, Pharaoh uh, it brings actually severe slavery upon them. I mean, in the time that we, we live in today, slavery is already such a far-fetched concept for us to understand. So just imagine them going through severe slavery then. Well, um, in all of this then, we know the story basically of how God then sends Moses to um, go and speak to Pharaoh so that, and to go and tell him to free his people basically. And um, we know how Pharaoh hardens his heart every time that Moses goes to him and uh, God brings about plague after plague after plague and yet Pharaoh um, still continues to say, no, he's not letting the Israelite nation go. Eventually, God says that the Israelites are his firstborn son and um, Pharaoh needs to let the Israelites go. And if he doesn't, that he'll basically, um, he will basically kill every firstborn son of the Egyptians. It's basically only in this moment when Pharaoh loses um, first in line to the throne, that he actually then changes his mind and said, let the people go. And in this moment, he basically only realizes after they have gone that his entire working force that he has enslaved for all of these years is now gone and he has nothing. And in that moment that he realizes this, he sends his army um, armies after after the Israelites um, to to go and attack them. This is the moment where Moses at the Red Sea, he puts up his staff, he parts the sea, the Israelites pass through freely and um, the Egyptians then drown in the sea. So now in this moment, after they have been freed from slavery, their physical bodies are now free from slavery, but in, in in the next moment that you realize that it doesn't matter if your physical body is free, that the that you, that your mind, if it has been through so much, it has been through so much oppression, there's still something that your mind needs to go through to be delivered from that oppression. It speaks about it um, in Exodus how they have been 
through they had been enslaved for 430 years that's a very long time um, the leader at that stage which was Moses um, lived 120 years so if you think about it maybe the average lifespan at that stage would have been a hundred years if that be so then that um, there's about plus minus four generations that were in slavery to put that into perspective so if you think about it that 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 first generation that might have been enslaved um, you can imagine that must have been difficult because they they knew what freedom looked like and now suddenly they're being enslaved now suddenly the wall has been taken from them and i can imagine them kicking against it still wanting to um to have their walls back having to have their freedom but the next thing that you can imagine for yourself in, in generation in this being generational that the kids are being born in slavery and I can just imagine the conversations that must be that must have happened between parents and children and at that stage being born into slavery that um, maybe there was um, conversations of in, in order for you to get through um, what we are have been enduring for all of these years you are going to need to put your head down um, and, and, and when when you are oppressed in the situation, you need to just put your head down and you need to continue um, this way um, just in, to ensure that you get through this day. And I can imagine that this becomes a reality with each passing generation. This becomes more and more and more so. And I, and I can imagine that the hope even becomes much less and less and less that they are going to leave this place of slavery. And um, I've recently uh, listened to the story of Oprah and um, how she had come from um, generations of slavery. How her grandmother was a slave, her mother was a slave. And coming from that, the expectation was that she would also be a slave, a, a cleaner in somebody's house. And um, she she explains a story how her, her grandmother one day as she's busy washing um, their clothes and she's busy hanging it up and she's explaining to um, to Oprah is that you better watch what I'm doing right now because very soon that this is what you are also going to do. And as a very young girl, she remembers this and, and she says that she didn't really know what she wanted to become at that young age, but she definitely knew that slavery is not where she wanted to find herself a couple of years down the line. And exactly that is that we know Oprah is one of the richest women in the world today. And, and, and what a story, what an amazing turnaround story that is from slavery or her parents being in slavery to to where she is one of the richest women in the world and but the scary reality is that that's not everybody's um, story um, how things work out for a lot of people because a lot of times when there's been generational um, uh, slavery when there's been generational oppression is very very difficult to come out of that cycle and we see it so very well in the story of the israelite and and we see this by how they start acting out and and the things that they say and they do after that they come where, where their physical bodies are now no more in slavery and um, but yet you hear it by by the conversations that they have is that their minds are still very much so in slavery they are complaining about absolutely everything they are complaining about water they are complaining about food they are just complaining about everything that they could possibly have and um, and you know what maybe this is the situations that 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 we all find ourselves in maybe um, you have generationally been coming from poverty. Maybe it's three or four generations back that has been having has had to deal with poverty, and you sit right now in the situation where you yourself has have also have about 
20, 30 years of, of being in a situation of poverty and, and it has shaped your mindset. Maybe God has been speaking to you about a business. Maybe he's been speaking to you about your finances, but it's just not something that you can comprehend at this stage because of the oppression that you have been going through, whether it's just in your own life or whether it is from generation to generation. Maybe it is sickness. Maybe that your family has from generation to generation been, been struggling with heart disease, with whatever the case might be, and you have struggled with it from generation to generation, and it's very difficult for you to even comprehend healing and wholeness because you've been dealing with something and hope has been lost in your situation because you've been going through it over and over, and it's just been non-stop in your life but the thing about this is and what we see with the Israelites is as well it, it it's of no use that just your your body be delivered out of a situation is that your mind just as much needs to be delivered so that you can step into the promised land because this is what God wants to lead them to so eventually after they step out and, and they are freed from this place, is that God then now is leading them into the promised land. But the thing is that it's such a difficult thing to go from a people who have now been enslaved for 430 years and now to become um, land owners. There's a very big... Um, gap in between those spaces and there's so much healing and deliverance that needs to happen in between these spaces so these people can realize that this is what God wants for them even though they know that, that God wants the best for them is that they do not have the boldness to step into this place because their minds have so been boxed by all of these years of slavery. You know, so many times that I've read this story and I've thought to myself, these people are so ungrateful in everything that God did for them. They just, they are constantly moaning, they are constantly fighting and, and they are just ungrateful. But I realized in, in very recently, in just reading the story again, is that it's maybe not as much ungratefulness as it is um mindsets are uh, being boxed by a mindset of, of being through slavery for so long and then now finding yourself that you're suddenly free and now you really do not know what to do with you cannot comprehend all that God wants to give and I imagine um, them being the chosen nation God wants to give them absolutely the best and on of everything that he can but this nation cannot comprehend it and my heart for you guys is to be able to see those things in your life where you are enslaved by situations either from the past generationally or just maybe in your generation and in your life that you that you've just been going through things for the longest of times and to then get yourself to get free in your mind as much as your body as well for the things and the promises that God has for you so you can t fully step into God's promises so the question is then after I've seen all of these things in my life, is how do I free my mind after I've been through all of these things? And I've basically looked at the story of Exodus and, and, and what was happening then. And in Exodus 13, um, verse 17, it speaks of, of, of where after God has led them out of um, out of slavery into freedom he basically says that he's not going to lead them through philistine country where there is war um, because he know that when if they should at this stage when they've been through such traumatic experience for all of these years that they will go back to egypt if they come across war so he takes them on a way longer path basically um, so that they do not go through the war of of war areas basically um, on, on, on route to their deliverance basically.
And, and I realized there that, that God exactly knows. He knows what they have carried. He doesn't only just know the physical side of what they carried. He knows the emotional side of what they carried. His nation, he knows this. And thus he, he knows that there's a process and there's, it's going to be a process of bringing them to deliverance, not only their bodies, but their minds as well. So I don't know if you might um, find yourself in a situation where you're stagnant or, or where you, can't, you find yourself that you, you always want to go back, whether it's go back to relationships, go back to old ways um, after God has delivered and brought you out of a situation. Maybe this is a mindset situation that you need to go and look at, that you need deliverance from because you've just been constantly through the struggles of being enslaved, being oppressed, and allow God to set you free in the spaces. Then again in Exodus 16 verse 4, God speaks about how he's going to test the obedience to his law. So in him, in, because basically he's providing to them right now, he's providing water, he's providing food to them right now. But he's saying he's testing their obedience to the law um, in providing for them. So for me, the first thing in when we want to come get free from oppression in our mind is to fill our minds with the things of God, to fill it with his truth generationally now you things have been spoken into life things have been said to you that you are not worthy that um we have all been through uh, p poverty this is this is what you also going to have to carry and 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 over the years that this is the truths that has become your truth but through his word you need to replace what has been their lies with absolutely what God's truth is and what his truth for your life is. So absolutely with his word. Then um, you also, he, in, if you read the story in Exodus as well, he gives this large explanation of 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 the of building the tabernacle. And, and you'll see these multiple chapters on um, what the tabernacle needs to look like and, and all the finer details. I don't think there's anything in Bible with quite so much detail and, and quite so many chapters that, that are given to it as the tabernacle, which showed you how important the tabernacle was to God because he wanted a place where his people could have access to him, where they could dwell with him. And um, you know what, with all of us being... Um, in lockdown, I guess all of us have at some stage tried a, a YouTube video or a tutorial, whether it is a recipe or whether it is a DIY project. And it's quite funny that even while we have a video showing it, how somebody does it step by step, we still have a way of possibly getting it wrong. And um, yeah, these craftsmen um, that and this master craftsman that was supposed to go and build the tabernacle, they are just given this in word, and um, they need to bring forth the tabernacle. But I realize as well that you cannot just bring forth the tabernacle like that because the tabernacle was really. Um, so far ahead of its time. If you, if you think about it, the Israelite nation were people that um, trekked around in tents in the desert. And now God is expecting them um, to build a tabernacle that, that is very extrav extravagant in, in every detail. Of it, So I realize in this that it's so necessary and must have been so necessary for them to have very closely co-labored with God, have walked with him and at some stage say, you know what, I don't get this part. This doesn't make sense for what I know and what I'm resourced with. This part of what you need me to build in the tabernacle just doesn't make sense. So I'm asking for your help here, God, so that tell me what is it? What what exactly do you expect of me to do? And I realized that they very closely had to co-labor with God. And for us to come f free in our minds from the oppression and things that we've been through um, generationally is to give God 
access is to co-labor with him in those spaces that that you just feel like you are not breaking forth that 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 you have had struggles over and over sickness with finances with relationships whatever the social situation is give him access into that because a lot of times that we, we've, we've we've gotten so hopeless in that situation that we have have I've closed it off and we decided that you know what God I'm not going to give you access to the space and maybe you have not even said it but just um, how you handle situations might might not give him access to those places so give God access to those oppressions and co-labor with him and see your destiny come forth third part for me to get free um, is worship they were definitely worshippers because you hear in Exodus 33 verse 10 where um, Moses goes into the tent of meeting to meet with God and then the cloud comes over uh, the tent and, and as soon as the, the, the cloud comes over the tent everyone then knows that God and Moses are in communion with one another and they all then rise and start worshipping at their tent doors. And for me, this speaks about whatever they, in the rising, it speaks about that you are you now immediately leave whatever you have been busy with. If you've been cooking, if, if you've been talking, if you've been doing what, you are turning away completely from that and you are giving your full attention to God because this is what is important right now. And sometimes we... Enemy keeps us so busy with all of these things that, that, that might seem very important at the moment. But there's an importance of turning our attentions away from whatever the busyness, everything that's happening around us. And um, to go into your secret place and, and just to turn your attention absolutely to God. And then to worship in your moments of, of your sickness and whatever you're experiencing as your oppression is to worship him. Um, and I know it's a difficult, I know because I've been through this myself, to, to, to be able to worship in our difficult moments, it's such a difficult thing to do. So in our sickness, to be able to, to, to thank God for my healing and for my wholeness and, and thank you for... A, a, for a great immune system it is difficult in in the eye of when sickness is in me or in my family or somebody close to me when um the same with poverty or the same with with financial deficits it, it is difficult when when you do not know how you are going to get through this month and um, but still to be able to thank him for who he is um, as, as a God of more than enough. Um, that, that there's no lack in him, so there can be no, can't be any lack in me or in my family. It's very difficult, but, but worship needs to be the natural place of our heart. Um, I heard somebody say the other day, you know what, that um, what we do on earth is in practice for what we're going to be doing one day when we get to heaven and and one of the things that we will be doing lots of is worship and we really need to become very very comfortable with being worshipers because we will be doing a lot of worshiping once we get to heaven so the third part being worship to get us set free and the last one being his will um, referring here to um, where when with all the moaning of the Israelites it was all about their will and what they wanted it was what they needed to drink it was what they needed to eat it was what their will was but that simple verse about your will be done um, on earth as it is in heaven your kingdom come and, um, you know, it's such an easy thing, I think, to say this verse of your will be done. Because it's a very difficult thing. Because we live in a world that's very naturally um, all about itself and very selfish. And um, so it was even a difficult situation for Jesus himself um, 
for 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 him to say god i choose your will him as his father him who was fully god and fully man um in the garden when he was about to go be crucified and he was praying and he was begging God that that he that he is anxious about the situation and he just wants his cup to pass him and then eventually after all of this praying he says may your will be done that he chooses his will so it shows us that surrendering to our will and giving place to God's will is not an easy place but um yeah, but the entire verse is your will be done and your kingdom come. And um, with kingdom, basically heaven coming to earth. Um, it, it's basically saying that every, what the atmosphere of heaven is needs to be what is in earth and and as we know what what heaven is all about that our everyday world that is not what it looks like but it is our responsibility to make sure that kingdom comes in our lives that kingdom comes in our kids schools and where we live and in our churches and all of these spaces because at the end of the day we are God's ecclesia we are his church we are the two and the three gathered in his name and you might be thinking at the moment that that if i can't be at church i can't be with the people that we still have the two and the three gathered in his name um it's you you and your your kids um you and and your husband you and your wife you and your prayer partner that is what we still have and there we you and that another person stand in agreement um there god's blessing is there he, he releases um what has been spoken in agreement and um so bring kingdom bring heaven into situations and 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 there where you've been oppressed bring that um abundance in, in finances bring health into your situation by being that two and three gathered in his name and, and and telling God that that you know what I declare that me and my family we are your ecclesia we are your church in this space that we are in our home and we invite you into our home come and transform each one of our spaces come and transform the actual physical atmosphere of of our home and how we relate to one another um change the, the places that we are oppressed and that we have seen no change in a year a year after year come and change those areas because we are asking for this in agreement um we we want to bring kingdom and heaven into our lives and even so um and not only stopping with yourself and and your family but um you have just as great responsibility and and um to speak that same thing out towards uh your neighbors to to f people that you don't even know around you and the difficulties that they are going through that that two and three that agreement that you are bringing in their situation it brings deliverance that whatever darkness once operated in your area has no, no longer has the authority to operate because you are the church in that area you bring kingdom into that area so take a stand and 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 bring freedom not only to your life but into those around you's life so that is um what i have to share with you guys for today and my heart is truly that um the situations that you find yourself in, the, the oppressions and the places of slavery that, that you've been through generationally and you've been through for years, that you find yourself delivered from it, that, that you would identify it now through, through what we've chatted about and and that you'd really speak into these situations and, and go at these different spaces um, to, to have yourself and your family set free and that you will no longer be oppressed in it. So I'm just going to pray for us to end it all off. Father God, I just want to thank you for this, um, 
for this morning. I just want to thank you for everybody who was able to join us today, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word. Um, and thank you, Father, that it's never, it's never been your will to see us oppressed or enslaved, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Um, where the Spirit of the Lord is, we can truly say there is freedom. And I speak right now into everyone listening situations right now. And where there is oppression, Father God, I speak forth deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you come and touch minds, Lord Jesus, where their bodies might be free, but their minds are still enslaved, Father God. That you come and touch them um, in this place of this, um, in their minds, Lord Jesus, the boxes that have been formed around it, and that you come and deliver, that your Holy Spirit truly comes and delivers, Lord Jesus, and that they will step into their promised land, they will step into the fullness of what you have for their lives. We call for their destiny right now in the name of Jesus. I speak for freedom into your family and, and your life right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you are an ecclesia. You are the church and that you have the authority to bring forth light into every space of darkness that's operating around you at this moment. Thank you, Father, that we are not hopeless, that we are full of hope, that we are powerful by your Holy Spirit and that we will walk in that truth. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. See you soon.